why do you think it is that we stay in churches that are abusive, that are homophobic, that do not appreciate our gifts, instead of going to churches that uh, affirm who we are as people? Well, there are a lot of churches that do affirm who uh, we are as people, but they don't have yoke-destroying power, mm. unfortunately. And there's just as much, you know, political jargon and, and, and hoopla um, as there is, you know, in your conventional church setting, unfortunately. You know, there's hierarchy in every system, in every demographic. So I guess there's just not enough. Um, and then the ones that are anointed that we know are particularly same gender loving, they can't possibly reveal that that's available without being persecuted mm -hmm. themselves. So I, I'm just, I feel it's just that there's not, an, there's not enough outlets for that. So I'm here to uh, say he that will come shall come and will not tarry. I think we don't go to these uh, other churches and we stay in these churches because there's a soul tie there. Mm -hmm. A lot of our moms and grandmothers and great grandmothers and That's aunties tradition. and dads yeah. and they, you know, we were raised up in there. So there's a certain affinity we have for, I believe, the spirit of God moving. There's a certain way that we do connect. Mm -hmm. It's just we don't know how to do that minus, um, you know, the slander and, and, you know, the attack. And we'll take the attack just to get that feeling and that, that real power experience. Mm -hmm. But it's available without you having to be um, disrespected on a human level. And that's, that's where I'm coming from. So what I'm hearing from you is that it's not impossible in this day and age to be same gender loving and to be filled with the Holy Ghost and to have a relationship with Christ. Um, they're sitting right next to you every you know Sunday. That. I know that. <laughs> yeah, I definitely know they're that. Sitting right next to you every Sunday. So how do you reconcile who you are now, the person that you have disclosed to the world, mm -hmm. with all of those scriptures that are used, that have been used yeah. throughout? Genesis 19, yeah, throughout time to Deuteronomy 23, exactly. Leviticus, Leviticus 18, uh, Romans uh, 1, Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 6, uh, yeah. 19, all of those. Um, I reconcile it because I study. And unfortunately, we as a people, and you know, I'm sure more than just, you know, African Americans look at your blog, but particularly us, we as a people, we do not study. And we are destroyed as a race with a lack of knowledge. We're destroyed. We're destroying ourselves because of ignorance and, and, and well-intended ignorance, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. It's well-intended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I reconcile it by, by personal study. I don't take anyone's word for it. I tell people at the church, you know, yeah, I preached a good word. I'm glad it blessed you, but don't take my word for it. But let me play devil's advocate. It's right there in the book, in black and white. In Leviticus, it says, a man shall not lie with another man. It is an abomination. Yes, it does say that. But in that same scripture, it also says that children that are disobedient to their parents are to be taken out from the camp and stoned to death publicly. So do you, you know, stone your child to death when they make a mistake? That would be cool. That would be, you're going to jail. Yeah. So why would we take one portion literally and not the others why would we pick and choose if we're going to go by the word don't the bible says line upon line and precept upon precept and if you still have a problem with that then look at different interpretations not just because sometimes the bible is interpreted for where a particular writer was at at the time mm -hmm. culturally right and so like you'll see a lot of writings from paul that have a lot of greek mythology um, references to Hades. That's Greek mythology. So wherever that writer was, whatever city they were in, whatever country, that culture's influence delved into some of their human interpretations of the writings. And so you have to make sure that you get the core of it. Who was the writer addressing? What was this for? Are we in the law? Or are we in the New Testament? Yeah. And it's funny and to me. And if we are in the law then we better start bringing some bulls and some turtle doves to church and start selling some pigeons in the lobby because we need to make sacrifices before we can even come. Jesus took care of all that. Yeah. He took care of all that. He even spoke of uh, the eunuchs, you know, um, that some that will not give in marriage. He says, he said, you have those, and they're blessed too. But it, it, most of the same gender-loving or homosexual uh, ref scripture references 
um, deal more so with sexual immorality as it relates to prostitution mm -hmm. and idol worship. And so because it was being done as a Roman practice, um, you know, Paul addressed it because a lot of the, the young men were having sex with the priest to make the fertility god happy. So it had nothing to do so much with, you know, consensual relationships, same sex, mm -hmm. as much as it had to do with all sexual immorality, period. It was out of control. And so it had to be addressed. And that's that's where it's like I said, we'll we'll go into that mm -hmm. when we meet again. But you have to find out the real root of what it was. Sodom and Gomorrah was not destroyed because of homosexuality. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because of pride and arrogance. It was a very legalistic country that thought it was above everyone else. And the men that were after that angel that came into Sodom and Gomorrah really wanted to gang rape him. Mm -hmm. And that's why it was out of order. And so Lot says, here, take my daughter. They didn't want him because that's, they, they didn't want love. They didn't want a relationship with him. They just wanted him. And so that's why these things are being passed down from generation to generation. You associate <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah with gays. Yeah. It was destroyed. God destroyed them. He's going to destroy, destroy them then. He's going to destroy them now. He's the same God yesterday, today, forevermore. He hates fags. Yeah. So that's what it comes down God to. God said it. I believe it. I believe, and that's, and that's it. it. Without yeah. understanding the context of the scriptures. The Bible says that women are to be silent. How many female preachers have we come up under? How Ooh. many of our mothers yeah. are evangelists and pastors and teachers? So you still have, um, you know, segregation. You still have chauvinism that's still mm -hmm. blatantly apparent within the system of church. You still have racism where even certain apostolic denominations don't fellowship with each other because they don't want to be under a black pastor. Right. So I don't think homosexuality or lesbianism is the issue here, Darren. I think there's a whole bunch of stuff going on, and to take the attention off of the other issues that are going on that are against the Word of God and what Christians should stand for, mm -hmm. it's easier to just blast me and get everybody distracted.